hello hi how are you guys today i'm here with a message for you and and i will start by reading a couple of passages from the bible both in second timothy the first one in second timothy 1 1 to 7 and the second in second timothy 2 1 to 7. so the first passage reads second timothy 1 1 to 7 states this letter is from paul a missionary of jesus christ God has sent me to tell you that he has promised life that lasts forever through Christ Jesus. I am writing to you, Timothy. You are my much loved son. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you his loving favour, loving kindness and peace. I thank God for you. I pray for you night and day. I am working for God the way my early fathers worked. My heart says I am free from sin. When I remember your tears, it makes me want to see you. That would fill me with joy. I remember your true faith. It is the same faith that your grandmother Lois had and your mother Eunice had, and I am sure you have that same faith also. For this reason, I ask you to keep using the gift God gave you. It came to you when I laid my hands on you and prayed that God would use you. For God did not give us the spirit of fear, he gave us a spirit of power, of love, and of good mind. Amen. And the second scripture from 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 7 reads, sorry, 2, 2 to 7 reads, O Timothy, my son, be strong with the strength Christ Jesus gave you. For you must teach others those things you and many others have heard me speak about. Teach these things, teach these great truths to trustworthy men who will in turn pass them on to others. Take your share of suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus, just as I do. And as Christ's soldier, do not let yourself become tied up in worldly affairs. For then you cannot satisfy the one who has enlisted you in his army. Follow the Lord's rules for doing his work just as an athlete either follows the rules or is disqualified and wins no prize. Work hard like a farmer who gets paid well if he raises a large crop. Think over these three illustrations and may the Lord help you to understand how they apply to you. So in the first letter, when Paul speaks, of, when Paul speaks to Timothy, he tells Timothy that he thanks God for his life and he prays night and day. Paul there displays in himself diligence and discipline in praying for Timothy night and day. Regardless of whatever is going on, Paul is praying for Timothy night and day. Paul understands the importance of being disciplined in his pursuit for intercession and prayer for Timothy. Paul speaks on Timothy's grandmother and his mother and Timothy himself his fa their faith. Paul assures Timothy that he, he has the same type of faith that his grandmother and his mother had in them too. Faith is something that God has given us as a gift. Faith lightens our burden when it comes to being disciplined and doing the work of God. God delights in our faithfulness. Faith is the thing that you know enables us to live at peace in God, in, in, in him, despite what is going on in the world around us. Our faith allows us to access the mind and the heart of God. And it's only with faithfulness, with faith in God, that discipline in our life can reign through. We cannot be disciplined if we do not believe that God has something great in store for us. Because as soon as we get to hard times, we give up. We can't be disciplined unless we believe that at the very end of our actions, something beneficial will take place. In order to be able to be disciplined in doing the works of God, we need to know who God is. We need to know who Christ is. We need to have an understanding of what God thinks about us, why he sent his son for us, why he sacrificed for us, why he loves us so much. We need to know ourselves, who Christ is. We need to know ourselves who we are in Christ and we need to know ourselves what it means for us to have a relationship with Christ. Without faith and without discipline, this relationship 
cannot be cultivated. This relationship cannot be strengthened. And without surrender, we don't even have, you know, that one-to-one -one connection with God to even draw from him the help that we need, the encouragement, the strength, the support, the love that we need in order to remain faithful and to remain disciplined. So first and foremost, it takes for us to surrender, surrender wholeheartedly to Jesus before we can even seek to have that discipline in him. We need to know who Jesus is and we need to know that we need Jesus in our life. We need to know that we need to surrender totally to him. So have the desire today for Jesus. Have the desire for Christ in your life. Surrender all to Jesus.